Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over Kali Linux or rather I want to have a navigation of Kali Linux to introduce those who are new to it with the tool and maybe explain a couple of things here and there, questions that you may have about Kali. Now, remember, Kali Linux is not an operating system in and of itself. It is a tool built on Debian operating system, or I should say is an information or network security tool built on Debian operating system, and the operating system has been locked down and many services disabled to make it more secure for Kali, but it's totally customizable. Kali is a project maintained by Offensive Security. Offensive Security is a um, educational company, and they also provide cybersecurity services to major organizations and things like that. And they maintain this project. They have maintained Calic for a very long time. And as you could see, if you go to calic.org, you're going to be able to see all the different options that they have for you to run. If you are new to Calic, I would advise you or recommend that you would run this first on, on a virtual machine. And then once you like it, then you may find a dedicated computer for it. One of the um, benefits, I should say, of Kali is that the project is so developed and so well maintained that they're always coming up with new tools, with new architectural supports, with new ways of doing things. As you could see here, you could run it on virtual machines. You can download the ISOs and install them. It's going to run on different architectures. As you could see, you can read the description of the different architectures here, you could run on the, on the mobile, cloud, live boot, so on and so forth, and you're going to have different versions. Uh, when you install Kali Linux, you're going to come to the main desktop um, GUI for you. If you accepted the defaults during the installation, it's going to look something like this. If you change the desktop environment, it's going to look maybe a little bit different. But something to keep in mind is that on the top left corner of your screen, you are going to have the uh, the application menu. And just like any other operating systems, once you open the application menu, you are going to have a search box. In the search box, you can type the tools that you are looking for. If you don't know where the tool uh, is going to fall under in these categories, as you could see here, they made it easier for us because they created tools categories. For instance, if you want to have something on, if you want to look something related to information gathering, obviously you come right here and you're going to see all these tools. And some tools are going to have sub menus for you to look into. The same thing for vulnerability analysis, application analysis, so on and so forth. Um, you can also search for a specific tool. Let's say that you are thinking, you know what? I don't know where Nmap falls under, right? So you can just type it. Or if you're looking for a tool and you don't know the name, but you have an idea what the tool is about and you may be guessing the name, like for instance, if you're looking for something Wi-Fi related, just type WI and you're gonna, you're gonna see things that start with AWI and then you can continue that. Um, this right here, is your taskbar, right? Similar to, to the same thing you're going to see in Windows. And in the taskbar, one of the cool features that you're going to have, and again, this is not unique to Kali, you're going to have the different workspaces. You have four, I believe, workspaces by default because you can have uh, different tools open on different windows and you don't clutter your desktop in that way. And how to uh, create these different workspaces. Um, as you could see here, we have the uh, notifications, the alerts, and if you want to log off and log the computer, you're going to see that from here. So let me go to workspace one. Let's go back here to the uh, menu one more time. And if you want to do further customization of your desktop environment, you can come right here to the settings menu, settings manager, which is, this would be something equivalent to, um, not device manager, uh, control panel in Windows, right? Or system settings in Mac. 
So as you could see right from here, we're not gonna go over all of them, obviously, but now you know where to find them. You're gonna be able to change your desktop uh, environment if you wanna you know, change the icon or come up with a different icon. I never like these super busy icons. Uh, apparently, it's one of those things that many YouTubers, when they're demonstrating security tools, they wanna have something like this and rock music playing in the background. I never got that, but hey, we're <laughs> that, that's why we have options, right? We, we all select what we want. But uh, you can, like any other desktop environment, you can upload your pictures or do what you want and configure it the way that makes sense to you. Uh, you have the icons, you can customize them and you can go back to the main uh, menu. Uh, you can, uh, you know, like change the display settings, you know, configure uh, the screen settings right here. If that's something that you wanna do, I'm running on a VM, so I'm not gonna do any of that. But if you're running on a desktop, or if you have Kali installed on a desktop or laptop computer, I should say, and you wanna customize the uh, display settings, this is where you do it from. And then you're gonna have, oh, the workspaces options right from here, as you could see, you could add them or delete the uh, workspaces right from this area. Um, another thing that I wanna mention is some people um, sometimes get a little bit confused when they're new to Kali Linux, and let me go back to the uh, application menu, is that not all tools that you see listed here are GUI-based. Uh, some tools are GUI-based and other tools are command line-based. It just so happens that you can access them from here. For instance, if I wanna access, um, let me come over to uh, Maltigo, it's gonna take forever, right? If I do inf uh, this, but this is GUI based, let me find something else. Let me find, oh, for instance, right here. Um, web application scanning, I have Zap and I created a video and I'm creating a series of videos on Zap, right? Which is um, um, application vulnerability scanning. So this is a GUI based tool that, oh, it's right here. I had it open in the background. But if I wanna use another tool that also performs vulnerability assessment, let's say that I wanna do, I wanna use WP scan, that is um, command based, command line based. So you're gonna have to use the command line. So it is imperative that you are familiar with uh, command line navigation to use Kali. It's not, it's not mandatory, but it's but it is like advisable for you to know how to use and navigate the command line. And again, this is uh, uh, Linux based, it's not unique to Kali. So as long as you are familiar with Linux's command line, you're gonna be able to maneuver and navigate the command line here. So it is imperative that you are familiar with this because you're gonna be able to uh, use more tools. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that all these tools that you see here are pre-installed with the version of Kali Linux that you downloaded, but it doesn't mean that those are all the tools that you can use. You can install tools either by the official repositories or you can download the tool from any other source as you would do in any other operating system and install the tools as you wish. But one of the cool things about Kali is that it's gonna have repositories with tools that you're gonna be able to use. And if you don't have the tool, the tool installed on your system at any given time, if you know the name of the tool, for instance, let's say that you wanna install Happy. I don't know what Happy is, but let's say that there's a tool called Happy and you hit enter. The system is gonna prompt you. It's gonna see that there's a tool called uh, Happy in the repositories and it says, do you wanna install it? You can say yes or no. I'm gonna say no because I have no idea what that is. But you have the option or you can always download the tools and you know from another source and just follow the instructions and install the tool. And some of the installation is gonna be command line based and some of the installation is gonna be GUI based depending on the tool that you are working with. As I mentioned before, um, this is a project that is constantly being maintained. That being said, you can always check for updates, right? You can do um, sudo app update and let me uh, 
come over here, hit enter, type in my password. And the system is going to check to see if there's any available updates for your system and it's going to tell you yes it's going to check all the packages and it's going to say in this case in this specific case of the version of Kali that I'm running it says that I have 2075 packages that can be upgraded so that is a great feature that you can use to uh, constantly keep your system up to date but like any other system you have to make sure that your hardware is going to be able to um, to support the uh, the updates. Now, when you do the update, it doesn't mean that you are upgrading. That is a di that is a separate process, right? It just like went out online and it found that there are updates for the packages that I have installed, and it says yes, you have an upgrade path if you want to. But by doing the command, this command, you're not gonna upgrade to anything you are just checking to see if there's any update if you want to upgrade what you would do is uh, sudo app for upgrade and then you're going to say yes to uh, not having to uh, confirm every uh, package that you want to upgrade i do not want to do this right now because it's going to take forever something to keep in mind and an, an advice that i'm going to tell you uh, based on experience if you're using vmware I would advise you to take a snapshot before performing any upgrades. The reason for that, as I mentioned before, is that when you are upgrading this system, it may be that one of the packages you're upgrading is not working properly, it's going to cause some damage, and it's going to render your uh, version of Kali or your installation of Kali uh, unusable. So. I would advise you to take a snapshot if you're running some type of hypervisor before doing an upgrade to avoid this kind of problem because it's very common uh, you know when when you upgrade especially if you have an older version of Kali that you haven't upgraded in a while it's gonna try to download everything so just keep that in mind and lastly something I want to mention one more time even though Kali is a distribution that is mostly used by information security pen testers security researchers and analysts so on and so forth you can also use it you know as a regular you know as a regular desktop environment as a regular you know like tools to perform your daily functions however you're gonna find that it's not that user friendly when it comes to it you know it is like the uh, Kali is locked down many of the services don't work and you're gonna have problems installing like some certain tools on it right so even though you could do it it is not recommended to do it that way the other thing that I want to mention and this is something that I've been applying over the last couple of years sometimes I only use certain tools that are for the specific functions that I'm doing at any given time. What I learned is that instead of using Kali, I just use Ubuntu and I download the tools that I'm using for that specific function instead of having all the tools that I'm not gonna need. Because as you could see here, you have so many tools that maybe I'm not gonna use, right, for what I'm doing at that specific time and instead of having all these tools and having these limitations because like Kali is going to be locked down, I just install the tools on Ubuntu and I run them and I'm happy and I can use Ubuntu, you know, as my desktop operating system to do other functions. So the options are yours. Uh, Kali is very customizable. It makes the life of information security specialists and those learning information security easier because it's going to have uh, the most um, well-known tools for a specific functions in one place. So you can do everything from one single place, but you don't have to. And lastly, I just want to mention that the fact that some people use Kali does not mean, you know, using Kali does not make you a hacker right at all um, you have to know how to use the tools you have to know uh, how to apply them how to collect the information and just having this is like you know if you have the option of buying a super fast car 
that's not gonna make you a Formula One or a NASCAR driver. So it is the same concept. The fact that you're gonna be using Kali if you choose to use it, it's not gonna make you a hacker. But again, if you're interested in network security, even if that's not your job of your function, if you're interested in it, if you're cur curious, if you wanna uh, use tools that are gonna make your life easier to understand certain concepts or how things work or how you can break them in your own test environment, by all means, you know, download Kali, run it on a virtual machine, install it, break it, install it, break it as many times as you want. So thank you for watching this video. As I mentioned before, this was not a tool specific video. This is just a concept of what Kali Linux is. We went through the different options in the menu and I hope you found this information useful. If you did, or I ask you for you to click on the like button, consider subscribing to my channel, and why not if you like to leave a nice message? We all need those nice words and spread them out out there. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you on the next video.